Hey guys, I'm Lucas. Welcome to KNews episode 31 about the Japanese H2A202. The rocket consists of a 4 meter wide core booster, which is fueled with liquid hydrogen and oxygen. Since hydrogen is the lightest gas, it has a very low density and needs to be cooled down in order to squeeze more of it inside the fuel tank. It still needs very much room and so rockets using it as a propellant are bigger and more complex in general. A future fix for that might be the use of methane. It is a natural gas which can be produced artificially by combining 4 hydrogen with one carbon atom. The carbon holds the hydrogen together so to speak which increases the density and a neat side effect is the carbon could be split from the atmosphere, cleaning it up. This procedure is not yet efficient enough to produce fuel in a cost effective way and is called methanation. It could still play a big role in the future because many space companies already develop methane driven engines, which could give the development in that department a little boost. H2A will launch in its 202 configuration, which stands for two stages, no liquid fuel boosters and two solid rocket motors. Just by the way, right now there are only two variants in use, one with two and one with four solid boosters, because for the even more heavy payloads a generally enhanced H2B version is used. As mentioned H2A has two stages and the upper one is powered by the LE5B engine. It can be reignited up to 16 times and burn for more than 40 minutes. That's a lot for an expendable engine and although it is highly speculative, maybe we'll see some reusable stages from Japan as well in the future. The launch will take place in Tanegashima, Japan and is scheduled for tomorrow morning UTC which is late at night in the US and you'll be able to see it live here on YouTube. The link is in the description. The rocket will head for a 31 degrees inclined orbit and the payload consists of the Astro H observatory and three CubeSats. Unlike ordinary telescopes which focus visible light onto an imaging sensor using lenses, Astro H has to achieve that using mirrors. Now why is that? A lens made out of glass for example is basically a rock made out of molten sand and for a strange reason light can pass it. Surprisingly the reason for that was unknown for a long time and even today is anything but simple to explain. However at least the effect is somewhat easy to show. Light or a photon for that matter does not just fly straight through glass as if it was a vacuum. Every time it comes in contact with something which is not a vacuum it has a chance to get absorbed, reflected or transmitted. The chances vary with the material. Glass consists of many atoms and this decision so to speak has to be made upon every contact and it takes time thus slowing the light down inside the glass. If we now imagine a black box which shoots multiple photons at once and draws circles from every impact inside the glass, we can see how the moving direction changes. The circles are used because we don't really know in which direction it goes, so we just assume all of them, like a wave. Now to show that the direction wasn't changed if the speed didn't change, I can simply keep the speed at which the circles expand the same. Now look at that. That's not a coincidence because if the speed doesn't change, the direction won't either. This is how little x-rays are break down in glass, they are not impressed and move almost straight. Long story short, instead of using refraction, Astro H has reflective mirrors. They reflect the rays multiple times to get the same effect. However that requires a lot of thin reflecting layers stacked on top of each other which makes this quite complex and expensive. The upper stage will release Astro H in a roughly 575 km high orbit from where it will observe the universe. The observatory in space is needed because X-rays get actually absorbed in the atmosphere which makes it difficult if not impossible to observe them from ground. I know that sounds odd because X-rays seem to penetrate things easier than light, yet light looks like it has less trouble in the atmosphere. However in these scales other effects take over which thankfully absorb high energetic radiation like X-rays and ultraviolet light, so we are not roasted walking outside. Thank you quantum mechanics. Ok, that shall include episode 31 about the Japanese H2A and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.